type of course. Uh, last night we saw some great racing by the pro men as we had uh, a lot of different dynamics occurring. Legion of Los Angeles on the front for a long time, but then late in the contest, the Legion lost a number of riders due to the increase in tempo, but it was Justin Williams who surfed the field like an expert and just really showed us a master class on how to freestyle sprint. Yeah, his patience was incredible last night. Absolutely. I mean, it was we were very excited to see how that played out. So we'll see if how he races tonight. He will be wearing the pink jersey of the leader of the St. Francis Tulsa Tough. And we're going to have them all come up to the line right now. Yeah, I mean, just watching Justin, you know, a lot of the if in the race, a lot of guys are only seeing, you know, the blue jerseys and they don't see Justin and they think that he's just out of the mix. But, you know, watching the stream, we could just see that Red Bull Hulk. Red Bull helmet floating around 15th wheel, ever present, and just watching it kind of all play out in front of him. And he was just making really good decisions, corner after corner, lap after lap, those last five laps to set himself. And he could just watch, he was just watching other people's chests. And it was just really, you know, just like, it's the best I've ever seen him race. And it was just amazing. And he, I know he, for so long he's been capable of that. And to really see that um, happen last night which is just as a fan of the sport watch somebody nail it that perfect was just amazing yeah if we have any recap of last night we'll put it up on the screen for you at home here as we have our men come being called up to the start line a lot of national champions represented here in tulsa tonight so this will be a very exciting contest as we have uh, a lot of our favorite riders all right, here we go. A little recap from last night on the screen right now. We started off with Legion of Los Angeles. Up out of the front constantly being there, but we saw a lot of uh, contribution by other teams to the pace setting by Tanner Ward there for Miami Blazers. As we got deeper into the contest, we started to see a lot of challenges, and then this late race crash sort of changed some of the dynamic in the field sprint, as we saw a loss of Legion at the front, and now we had Miami Blazers with Brian Gomez and Clever Martinez, but at the end of the night, it was in fact the king, Justin Williams, coming to the line, uh, freestyling his way to the front. Just an amazing ride by Justin Williams. Yeah, and you know, kind of like in our pre-race talk about how much can change in that sort of a sprint with the uphill is again you know his patience knowing knowing that from laps and laps of experience that you know the front of the race was going to come to him and he was going to be able to go around we talked to justin last night and uh we're going to give you guys a little bit of an insight on his takeaway from the race we think the front could be bigger to be safer in the middle of the race this course is pretty hectic it's a little bit longer now on out of turn two to turn three and that makes it a little bit more technical because people have more time to run up on the side of you. So we're dealing with that all night. We're trying to be patient and let teams come around and then reform at the front together. Uh, our team is really strong, man. Like, they're riding at the front without me. I love being in this, excuse my language. So I love it when it's really choppy and people are running into each other. All right, great to hear what Justin's takeaway from last night was. He uh, was very excited talking to Rasan Bahati, one of his mentors, now working for our uh, broadcast team here in the uh, St. Francis Tulsa Tough. We are now racing bikes, a little bit of wind kicking up here and give these guys a little bit of a, a breather here. But we'll see what the dynamics are. Brian Gomez and Michael Hernandez racing to turn one and maybe seeing uh, American Cycling and Miami Knights taking the race to the hot seat init initially. Yeah, just from our broadcast booth, we're here at corner one. We could see, you know, kind of look over our shoulder and see the Peloton come through. And uh, Sam Boardman, Tyler Williams from Legion, you know, are probably in the back third of the race. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how long they take to get up to the front of the race to um, you know, it's definitely those two guys' jobs to be, you know, early um, protagonists or, you know, keep control of of the race. And, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm a team director of this race against Legion, those are the things I'm looking for to communicate to my guys saying, hey, you know, there's two, three Legion guys out of position. You know, let's, you know, let's put some pace on. We're going to take a look at our course one more time. For those of you that have just joined us, this is the FC. Arts District Criterion. We have six turns that are on tap for us here tonight as we come down and around this L-shaped uh, course. It's a lot of pedaling uphill out of turns one and two. As you cut across to three and four, you go past Sound Pony. A lot more pedaling there where the after party is already on tap. And then you come around back down to the start-finish line. Yeah, counter counterclockwise left-hand turns 
Um, corner one is tight, really tight exit. Um, you can carry a lot of speed into it. So the front 10 guys, if they're single file, have no real issue getting through that cleanly and carry momentum. Once you start getting two guys three wide um, and more brakes are applied, you know, you slow down and then you have to re-accelerate into two, potentially slow down depending, and then re-accelerate into the hill. So you've got to be mindful if you're in the, you know, in the kind of scrum of it, 20, 30 wheels, to not fight too hard. Be really mindful with your energy. You know, be, be willing to kind of give up a wheel or two for the sake of keeping momentum versus fighting, you know, too hard just to hold your place, um, but hit the brakes. There's so many nuances in this race. Uh, we're going to take a look at just how long these guys are going to be racing for, but I think that there's the tactics here tonight are going to be a lot different than what we saw last night. Last night we saw Legion of Los Angeles on the front really controlling from lap number one. Now we are seeing a very different approach tonight. We are seeing uh, independent riders at this point uh, getting themselves separated from the rest of the bunch, and we are seeing... Uh, various teams also just sort of occupying the front sort of third of the race right now. We're going to try to pick out where some of our blue skin suits are for Legion of Los Angeles as they are all racing in that. We noticed that Justin Williams actually took off the leader's jersey. Uh, so he is back in his traditional blue kit with his Red Bull helmet. And we'll keep an eye on him. I think I see the uh, GoPro there of Corey Williams with the gold helmet in the mix wearing his uh he's actually not wearing blue either my goodness what's going on out there <laughs> yeah they're just giving uh you know playing a ruse making you think about it i think that's um you know california jersey of some sort with that, that Corey's wearing but yeah this is a for, for legion you know this is a course that they don't necessarily want to try to control or set that tone that they're going to control from start to finish it's difficult it's a lot of you know a lot of pedaling um you know even you know, a guy like alec cowan who you know, crashed yesterday, um, took on some damage. You know, guy like he may if he's not full power, you have to be mindful in your strategy and on how much you can use him or you know what he's completely capable of. So asking him to do another race start to finish after crashing could be a big ask. It looks to me like that's gonna be one of our primal Audi riders, Cyrus Peril. Uh, getting himself up. And then we have a two hundred dollar premium on the line, two hundred dollar premium for the winner of the next lap. This Primal Audi rider has been on the front now for two laps, so we will start to see him be uh, reabsorbed as we have the Austin Aviators bringing themselves up into the mix. And, of course, you've got Brian Gomez for Miami Knights right there. And don't forget about the gold helmet of Corey Williams wearing his California State Championship kit this evening. Always love to see those custom-designed state championship jerseys being represented in these races. So we have champions from around the country and around the world coming to Tulsa for a chance. Looks like the DCC squad low over the handlebars there, sprinting downhill out of the saddle, Ben. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's something you could totally do. It's, you know, this is something very representative of what we may see, you know, speed-wise, you know, into the finish. And he's, you know, uh, this is always a good test, a good opportunity this early to kind of test what is that going to feel like? What is the finish going to feel like? Uh, you know, what's possible? <laughs> he wants that $100, but who so does Hussein uh, from Anguilla? So we'll see, and it looks like it was, in fact, uh, one of our top riders to the contest, Hassani Hennis. Hassani Hennis uh, from Anguilla. He's the Anguilla national champion. He is now $100 richer for his effort out sprinting. Our, uh, one of our DCC riders. The Dario Raps. Dario Raps. But yeah, I mean, that was a good example of somebody, you know, that didn't carry as much momentum from first wheel and has seen, has seen he did. Mm -hmm. You know, and is able to carry that momentum and it's just 2K an hour difference, you know, 55, 57, or, you know, 58, 60. And you, then you also you get the slipstream. You know, you get that effect where it's possible to catch, you know, run a guy down. And we saw Dario look over his shoulder, thought he had it, lose momentum. You know, you, you don't pedal, you know, two pedal strokes. That's a, that's a big difference, and you can lose the race or lose a frame just like yourself. Big thanks, as always, to Helmeric and Payne for the drone shots that have been helping us get a bird's eye view on these races. They are always so, so helpful in understanding the path dynamic as the ebbs and flows of the race can sometimes be challenging to see and appreciate from the foreshortening of the camera lenses that we have on our corner cams. 
Uh, so big thanks to Helmerick and Payne for supporting our drone shots this uh, at this year's St. Francis Tulsa Tough. This is night number two, our Saturday night racing here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Last night was Blue Dome Friday night. Tonight is Saturday night, and it is the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium. This is our professional men's race. We are about six minutes in, and we've already uh, rung the bell for one premium. We're going to do it again, it sounds like. Another $100 premium on the line. And here we are, 645, and Sam Boardman and Tyler Williams. Basically, the last 20 wheels, going through the first corner of the first lap, are now 6th and 15th wheel, respectively. Wow. So just, it's amazing to me how these guys can float through these races so well. You know, some guys are at the back, and that's because they can't move up. Yeah, and there's some guys that will probably be looking around and go, oh, man, I'm next to Tyler Williams, Sam, Bur Sam, Sam, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm probably not that far away from him. And those guys aren't going to see the front of the race. And then at some point, they're going to hear their name over the loudspeaker and go, what? When did that happen? <laughs> I was, they were just here. They were, what, what's going on? And that's just like experience, you know, on this particular course and just overall in general and, you know, how to efficiently just, you know, get to the front of the field quickly um, to help your team. I think the uh, field shape right now is really indicative of just how hard this course is, right? I mean, I know this is my first time here. You've won this race a number of times. So many times you can't even remember. Um, I wish I had that problem. <laughs> like races. Um, oh, crash whoop, on the barriers. Crash on the barriers. But uh, as we came into the top of the course, I'm going to try to get uh, some more eyes on what was happening on that crash on the outside of the course there. DCC on the front for the moment. And looks like they're going to continue to set on. They have the German national champion. Uh, joining us here, Jonas Schirmeiser. There's our crash on the outside. As Here's what I talk about in the pre-race. It's it's narrow, and there could be a you know pinch point. And as you can start, how did that occur? Oh, right, you know, kind of right there in the middle. Middle of the field. Yeah. Wow. It's a little overlapping of the wheels with a uh, with an overlapping wheel. We'll see if the course is clear up at the top. I expect it to be, but we have the German national champion. Here's that two-up two up attack we were talking about last night. That's right. You have a buddy. You know he's going to rotate. You know, the gap is going out. And they've also found some of these kind of middle-tier riders in the middle of themselves and, and the larger teams. This is exactly what you, what you want to find yourself in. You'd be able to establish the gap and make it take longer for some of the bigger teams to get to the front to chase. Jonah, it's a lot of hard work. Jonas Schermeiser and Andreas Meyer. Andreas Meyer, your winner at the Armed Forces Cycling Classic uh, last weekend. So Meyer now on the front. He does not have the national championship jersey. The rider with the national championship jersey is Jonas Schermeiser. I believe that's Noah Granigan going across uh, Noah, from Denver. Noah Granigan of Denver Disruptors is one of the best uh, riders here as far as his Tyler ability. Williams Ooh. and an American cycling rider. I believe that might be Summerhill. Okay, so we're going to see a lot of teams represented in this uh, split right now. We know the Germans will continue to commit. Do you think the other teams will continue to commit? Yeah, there's no reason, you know, Noah, you know, should be really confident in that group that he, you know, that he could win. Um, it's really interesting to see Sam Boardman continue kind of to ride the front there. Um, at a solid pace, you'd think that he'd kind of flick yeah. or just set a tempo, let that gap go out and let other teams that have missed it chase it and take the ride. So for him to match that, um, a little bit strange to me. Uh, if I was in his position, you know, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I agree. I, I find it strange that he would do that, but you know, I think that these guys have come into the race with a specific tactic and Boardman is most certainly chasing right now as we watch them come by the commentary booth. So Sam Boardman of Legion of Los Angeles chasing, even though he has representation in the split. Yeah, but we're strung out, you know, single file, probably at least 40, and then it's double wide from there, you know, to the, to the back of the field. So um, I think the Germans are going to go. Summerhill should ride this, um, you know, blow this gap out. Um, and, and at this moment in time, not worry about Tyler Williams. Get that gap established, and then you kind of look at your brake mates and go, hey, let's just start one two in this guy. Let, let's really start making him work. Yeah. But ignore him from now, get that gap established, then then start to wheel, deal with Tyler. I agree with that 100%. So we've got uh, Noah Granigan on the front. He has won himself some jerseys at races like Tour of Turkey. He's a Tour of Somerville champion as well. Uh, so Granigan racing for Denver Disruptors. He is going to be one driving this pace in the uh, black and brown kit. Now, look at that. Did the well, gap already come back together? Yeah, and that can happen so fast at the top of the climb in that plateau. If you don't 
you have to commit, it's not to the top of the climb, it's almost, all, you have to commit all the way to corner five to keep momentum into the downhill. And if you don't, if you just kind of soft pedal over the top and there's people attacking over the top of the climb into the Red Bull Arch, mm. the, the gap can just go whoop, back to zero really, really fast. But what, now what I want to see is more counterattacks, um, keep that field strung out. And anybody that has, you know, found themselves out of place are stuck there or if they want to change their position, it's got to be really difficult. When the pace comes off like this, you know, riders that have kind of mispositioned themselves can now float back to the front with ease and not necessarily be punished by that that previous effort. Interesting to watch the faces as they come by us here too. Like some of the guys who are in the middle of the bunk still look very comfortable. Uh, still light on the pedals as they come by looking up. Their chins are up, their eyes are up. Uh, they're not really panicked right now. And so I, sometimes for me, I, I found that races where there's more uphill um, can afford some guys to just sort of find the flow and float a little bit. And But the contrast of that becomes when it really gets going, you can't fake it. You've got to pedal your way. you got to carry that speed yourself. Yeah, once you take fatigue on a course like this, it's, um, you're, you really start to become in that deficit. Uh, it's hard to take on fatigue and recover recover unless you're um, really fit but now, now two you know, DCC is really taking this two, these two up attacks um, to these guys maybe they listen to our podcast <laughs> very likely you know it's a very well informed um, highly educational podcast that we have uh, produced to everybody but now we can really see that it's strung out and what's really interesting is two DCC three Legion Summerhill Roadhouse Butcher Box Rider and the Blazers um, and then, you know, the, the gap is going out. So it would be really interesting to see if this continues to go out, what Legion is going to do with three riders in that move, um, you know, in this situation. And are the other riders immediately going to be deterred that there's three blue jerseys, uh, you know, in, in this split? Yeah, I mean, DCC clearly uh, employing some really favorable tactics here right now as far as we're concerned. When two up attacks have happened, Remember, a two-up attack means that you are getting yourselves an immediate friend in the break. And the, another great thing for me to observe, I don't know if you're going to agree, but... The, Sorry, we, we just teamers. have, you know, Rodriguez has missed the move from Knights. They've been out of position and is, you know, doing a really big effort to get a, get across to this. I mean, this is not good for him going into the finish. A rider like him needs to rely on his teammates to, to do this big effort so he doesn't have to because mm -hmm. it's still warm out in Tulsa. You know, these... These big of efforts in this temperature, still, you, you don't want to do these. He needs his teammates around him to do those large efforts yeah. uh, instead of that. But now we have, it's come back together, that front move split in half, and we have Michael Hernandez going across that, read that really, really well, used all that momentum to get himself about halfway up the field, or halfway up the climb, excuse me, uh, to get into that front move. And now Rodriguez, Rodriguez has been going hard for, you know, almost going to be going on a lap because he's moved. This is a really, really big effort for him yeah. that he should not be doing. He should have teammates. He should have Clever Martinez at least doing, you know, doing his efforts. Now he's swung. He's he's taken on the he's taken on the fatigue, realizing, wow. you know, I, I can only do so much. I need a lot of help. Wow. So interesting decision there by Alfredo Rodriguez not to call on Clever Martinez or Brian Gomez to actually do the work. And we're going to see Texas Roadhouse getting themselves into the mix there. That's nice to see. I think that might be Fergus. Um, Arthur from those guys, he's, you know, a guy that um, excelled really quickly last year, you know, got himself to the front of his bike races. You know, he won, uh, if that is Fergus, he won a race in, I believe, Spartanburg maybe solo? Okay. Or one of the Speed Week races um, all by himself. It was a really impressive ride that caught the whole field off guard. Yeah, when I talked to uh, Mr. Kyle Perry uh, a few weeks ago, he was talking to me about Fergus as a workhorse. I see even Lucas has also made that split you know, for Austin Aviators. Yeah, and this is, if, if this tempo keeps going, Van Rinsburg made that. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a, that's a guy that you know you kind of want up there, uh, but now we see Iman kind of countering attack. If these guys keep racing as aggressive as this, we're going to see some really exciting, like this could be an exciting race lap after lap if they can kind of do this for this full full race distance. This is Iman Lucas off the front right now. So he, that was a really nice move there by Iman. He was at the back of the group just as it was about to get caught by the field and Iman sort of anticipated that. He accelerated, he went open over to the other side of the course and now Iman Lucas is off solo. He races for Austin Aviators and we'll see if he gets any teammates. Number 55, that's another DCC rider. That is gonna be uh, Julian Kern. 
Or excuse me, Reinhard Gies van Reinsberg. And that's a that's a good ally for Iman. Iman's been in Europe, the UK, you know, doing that kind of stuff. So he's found himself back in the US, um, you know, racing this format. Um, so we see the DCC rider coming across to Iman. It's two guys. And now we see Ty Mander kind of using his experience to kind of take control of the Peloton. Um, you know, ride fast enough where people go, okay, hey, this is a really good tempo. It might be a little too difficult to attack and allow his guys to you know, recover, but also get back together, you know, get their train back in twos and threes so they can kind of uh, find themselves with better odds as, as moves develop. $100 premium on the next lap. You've got Eamon Lucas and Julian Kern off the side. And uh, we got ourselves uh, some good bike racing here. Yeah, so these guys are starting to work, you know, really well together, find find the rhythm. What's helpful for Iman, he's finally found somebody close to his size that he's going to be able to draft and build some recovery off of uh, while they're doing this kind of move. And, and Legion has gone to the front uh, with two guys to just kind of start setting some tempo, uh, make their presence known. And, you know, they can kind of almost rely that if they put a couple bodies at the front of the race, um, after 15 minutes of hard racing, a lot of guys are just going to go, okay, hey, we're going to put the pressure on. You know, Legion to chase this back in. Ty's just using all his experience right now to, you know, settle things down, take some of the tempo out of the race that's been difficult, um, is that's what, you know, what his end goal of his team is. But now we have a Blazers rider who came over the top of that climb uh, that wants to keep the race hard, uh, get injected in this race. We really didn't see Blazers much in that first 15 minutes of racing. We have a... Uh as we see the development in this race occur, as it starts to shake out a little bit, we actually have Alexi Ramirez from Miami Blazers joining us here in the broadcast booth to give us a little bit of a perspective on what occurred in the women's race. Alexi, thank you for joining us here. And uh, talk to us a little bit about how your, how your race went, but also help us understand what the race dynamic was like out there in the women's pro race. Um, so, so Today, uh, it was pretty fast. Um, our plan was that we were just gonna uh, maybe look for a break because we thought that maybe today had a potential for a break. Um, but it was pretty controlled by the teams. They had a couple moves that went, but they came back. So we just, me and Antonietta, um, we just sat in and decided to basically wait for the sprint. Um, there was a crash with 18 laps to go and they neutralized the race and we restarted the race and they put it down to 15 laps to go, uh, which I mean, of course, with 15 laps to go, it's pretty chaotic. So we got to the front and we just kind of uh, stayed up high because we didn't want to be in any danger. And with about 10 laps to go, it got super fast. There was every single lap I came around, I was like, God, it feels like it's one lap to go still. Um, and then with four laps to go, there was a move that it seemed like it, it could have potentially stuck. So I, I made my effort and I tried to jump. But at the same time, they were sprinting and I had a gap and I was like, oh, no, it's not going to work. So I just waited for the peloton to come back and I slotted back in. And uh, I was in a pretty good position coming down until one lap to go. And I mean, I just I kind of blew up because of that move. And I mean, that's fine. Antonietta came through and, and she finished off pretty well for us. So yeah, I'm she happy. did. And when you when you put in an effort that late in the race, there's yeah. only so many things you can really do to recover at that speed. Of because of what we saw was Legion of Los Angeles just like absolutely throttling yeah. it tonight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, uh, that's how cycling is. And I mean, that's what happens, you know, when we have two two girls on a team, sometimes that risk is, is you know, it, it's going to cost you. But I mean, that's fine. That's racing. And I'm proud with how, how we rode tonight. That's great. Yeah. Are you looking forward to uh, tomorrow, Cry Baby Hill? I mean, I'm going to try my best climbing. It's not my forte, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you're here, you're ready to race your bike here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, any final words for us? Any final insights? I mean, I mean, Tulsa's the best race. It's the biggest race for our team. We really love being here. We love all the promoters, the sponsors, everything. This is one of the best races for the year, so I'm really happy to be here. All right, Alexi. Well, thank you for joining us here in the broadcast booth. And uh, get your legs up, and we'll see you tomorrow at Crybaby thank Hill. Thank you so much. And now we're seeing... Blazers, um, you know, counterattack this move after Iman and the German rider from DCC has, has come back. Um, I think it's Spencer 
from Blazers, putting in his pace. He had just a really unfortunate event, you know, stream of events last night that kind of disrupted his flow and his race last night. It was a good course for him, but um, he's recovered well. We can kind of see that bandage on his knees, but um, Smith is one of these young guys who came from the Butcher Box program, uh, has been piecing it together, you know, piece by piece uh, from a small program. He's done really well to elevate himself to one of these larger teams. Uh, you know, I'm kind of really excited to see what he can, uh, you know, do on a course like this. You know, it's one where, you know, we've seen riding solo by yourself for a long amount of time is, is really, really difficult. So he's really kind of hoping to draw draw some some other riders out that want to kind of do this. But Okay. Cool. Well, I mean, I think that there's a lot of parties that are happening on course right now. And, of course, we're going to have parties afterwards because this is Tulsa Tough, the St. Francis Tulsa Tough, one of the most exciting races for everybody in America, not only for the racing that occurs on course, but also for the after parties. But tonight we've got our... Uh, Got some great fun action that we're going to try to throw up here for us to see the Big Rod Ghostland Observatory with sports and DJ ECOG live EDM F after party hosted by Hannah Bliss. That is tonight at Flywheel. My goodness, we got that going on. And then we also have our sound pony stuff, the Big Rod Ghostland Observatory with sports and DJ ECOG. You know when every time you see skulls with stars flying out of the eyes, whoo, that's where you need to be. It's going to be a party. You know, one thing that um, being here in the, in the booth on corner one that I've noticed while you were talking, um, you know, there was Alfredo Rodriguez is really far back in the field. That effort that he did to try to be a front of the bike race for that long has put him in a big hole, and he's, he's found himself quite, quite far back then he would you know pre really prefer you know or, or what his team would even want him to be so it's something to be mindful let's kind of look for that miami knights rider um a little far back he's got the gopro on uh back there behind that white jersey and that's really far back right now in, in the moment so he's got to communicate with some of his riders to say hey uh you know i'd like somebody come at least ride by me you know come come close yeah um that way when he's recovered he's got somebody to help him move back to the front of the field instead of trying to have to do it by himself but kind of there is, he's the third third GoPro there, kind of the one that's moving around the most. It's clever, Frank Travieso, and then Rodriguez is going to be, you know, right there coming into the frame. Coming by us here, we have uh, Juan Arango, your Olympian from Colombia. And Johnny Clark here, <laughs> maybe the Johnny. oldest guy uh, in the field from Australia. Talk about a guy with I experience out the wazoo. Yeah. Um, still doing it, uh, passing on his knowledge to these, these new programs. Uh, and, the, and these younger riders, but he's a guy that, you know, if he's got one or two guys that are willing to work for him, he can really help that group establish a, a really solid crap. Yeah, Johnny Clark, I mean, my goodness, he has been around. He raced on the UHC Blue Train with his uh, brother Hilton, and man, he's part of the legend of American bike racing. Great to see him continue to be here. We'll see if this uh, move has any potential with Juan Arango and Mr. Johnny Clark. And then we got some guys that, you know, up the inside trying to bitch bridge that gap up the hill and through that Red Bull arch. And we'll kind of see as the, you know, through this drone footage, they've made it about halfway through the top. And that is one of the DCC German rider national champion with Noah Granigan, Alec Cowan, uh, Brandon Fury from Blazers behind him, a Butcherbuck rider, Sam Boardman, you know, back there just kind of covering, you know, all their bases. And, and Legion does a really good job of that. It's like, hey, one out of every four. Four one out of every four, that's really good odds for us. You know, if that moves into a 16, yep. we have, you know, four out of 16, it's really good. So Jonas Schirmeiser is your German national champion. He is now kicked out across uh, going left, and Schirmeiser is uh, really driving the pace right now. And we're seeing single file bike racing. We are also now seeing some riders coming off course here next to our uh, announcer's tent, showing us just how hard this race has become. And we are also starting to see a little bit more splits occurring in this single file field. I think this race is full gas, Daniel. I think that that is what is occurring. Yeah, I mean, we're really starting. I mean, Connor Saleh is at the back with another Austin Aviators. Rodrigo, you know, ha has not moved to his position in seven laps. You know, in the front of this bike race being consistently hard is pinning those guys into position. It's eliminating from the race at this moment. And that's what you want to do. These guys, these really good riders that are race winners that have found themselves at the back of the race, if you're able to just kind of pin them there, they're stuck. They can't do anything. And if they want to partake 
if they want to get back to the front of the race, it's another massive effort. Yep. You know, it's not just one bullet. It's a couple bullets, you know, out of their magazine that they, can, they can't use. Tyler Williams was there on the front, sort of trying to slow it down, trying to show it a little bit of a control there. And as we saw that, the Germans were coming back around and we're showing a little bit of a reshuffling. This will give some guys a little bit of a chance to recover a bit, or maybe we will see some more regional teams coming to the front and giving themselves an opportunity. Now, that it, because it's been so hard, for so long this is the chance for some of these other riders who maybe are in the front third generally and i believe that's andrew duar from the uh, cliff drifters program okay it has kind of made himself he's had a slow start to the year a lot of things kind of happened to him um really rough with some allergies and illness but it's you know good to kind of see him start to piece put the pieces together to get to the front of these bike races where physically he's belonging and he's getting he's getting the, ex the um the experience So we are looking at our riders single file as they come around and we see our riders come up in the ramp by us here in the broadcast booth single file racing. You know, it's something we, you know, it's it's a nuance, it's something to see um, that if you're not watching, if you're only watching the point of the end of the race, some subtleties that, you know, have been going on is Justin and Corey have found themselves 30, 40 wheels back riding together. In the last two laps, I kind of saw Ty Magner hanging out with those guys, probably talking to Justin. How you feeling? How's everything going? Um, you know, what do you want us to do to do up there? Um, and so if, if Justin's relaying, hey, you know, I'm not feeling that great, you know, um, help, help, you know, get control of the race, slow it down, give us a few laps to, to recover and get ourselves in a better position. You know, Ty's just gonna go up there, talk to Tyler, talk to Sam, talk to Alec and say, hey, you know, let's go start riding some some tempo, smooth this race out, give Justin and Corey a chance to just kind of take a deep breath, find themselves in a little better position. Or Justin saying, dude, I'm super good right now. Go, you know, go go make this thing even harder because I'm I'm feeling really good and I want to, you know, make this race as difficult as possible. So we'll see how that might play out in the next couple laps of some just small things that are happening towards the middle of the field as teams are starting to ride together, communicating. And, you know, we're just seeing some riders kind of just move around back and forth, talking to each other. Castillo on the front for the moment there for Denver Disruptors. And now we have Alec Cohen for Legion of Los Angeles. We saw him on the front quite a lot. And my goodness, we we have a oh, here on over race radio. We got ourselves a thousand dollar preem coming up on lap five. Five to go. I'm not sure. But yeah, now we can see Legion start to get to the front of the race. Um, you know, and from what we can see behind is it's ballooning. You know, the, the tempo has slowed down. You know, if you're at home, if you want to get an idea of what the pace is doing, you know, get the stopwatch, um, get the stopwatch out, pick a marker on the course, and start taking some lap splits in. You can really kind of understand when the race is going fast and going slow. And there's another crash. One rider down. It looks like he'll be all right. He's up and he's going to be walking away. So we're seeing the front of the race right now as we see Juan Arango. Juan Arango. One more time. This is the second time that we've talked about him. He's coming into this race pretty aggressively now. He's clearly showing himself. And number 29 is going to be Monk, maybe. Yeah, Monk has got his trademarks American flag gloves. So if you see um, a Blazer riders with those uh, American gloves, you can basically count on. That being Brandon Fury. And I got Tyler Williams from Legion with them. Um, again, this is where I feel Monk and Arango just kind of have to ignore him, ride, establish that gap, get it out there, um, and then kind of figure out what to possibly do with Tyler, do you, you know, when that happens. Is the, is the operative move here when you have a rider like Tyler inserting himself to actually, like, force him off the wheel even? Do you be that aggressive about getting rid of him? No, if you, like, wait. Just do two, three laps. Really establish that gap. Mm -hmm. Get yourself in a rhythm. Don't play games. And then after, you know, three laps, if the gap is out there or growing, then you can start, you know, saying, hey, you be more vocal. Well, hey, contribute. Hey, participate. Hey, or, you know, start make it, finding ways to make him spend energy. But don't waste your energy so early in a move when it's not even established to get a guy to work. You know, you just really kind of have to. They're annoying as all get out. They, I yeah. mean, it's just so, so annoying. But you kind of just got to take a deep breath, race your race. Um, you know, and then start worrying about, you know, those riders employing those tactics at, at a little bit later time. 
So we're going to see and now another counterattack here by the DCC squad. And one more time trying to rip this race apart. We're seeing some dynamics there where the riders are coming up and on the inside. And a little bit of separation there thanks to our American pain drone shot. Here we have four riders, maybe five riders separating themselves, being led at the front by DCC. And of course, Legion of Los Angeles, two Legion of Los Angeles riders are responding to it. Looks like Tyler and Sam Boardman. Uh, all called to duty. Tyler Williams doing a lot of work in this race, covering a whole lot of stuff for Legion of Los Angeles, probably trying to protect Justin and uh, Corey from, although Corey's now doing the chasing from the back as well, from the field. Yeah, you know, we saw, you know, Alec really take a lot of the load yesterday. And, you know, now it's probably Tyler Williams, you know, not that Tyler had an easy ride last night, but it was an easier ride last night than today. So, you know, when you have a team like that, it's kind of you pick and choose your riders to, um, you know, do their work on, on what they may, may suit them better. So, I mean, clearly Legion of Los Angeles is trying to keep this thing together. I mean, anything that's gone away, the blue jerseys have been the ones that come to the front and try to soak it all back together. So we know that what their tactic is at this point in time. And I think it becomes the onus on the other teams out uh, here to try to shake that up. And DCC is the one that's really been bringing it. Denver Disruptors have also countered a few times. Uh, Miami Knights have responded to some of those separations. Um, and then yeah, we're, you know. Sorry, we were seeing, yeah, significantly different race than we s saw yesterday with a lot more teams, a lot more variety of riders, you know, from all the teams participating and making the race, you know, fast. And we can just see that on the stream of, you know, it's, if it's ballooned out, it's not for very long, and we're seeing a lot of single file, two wide riding, um, you know, the whole time. A little bit of a shift here, a little bit of washing machine effect on the front of the field as riders who are down in around 15th wheel now coming up to the front as they pass Sound Pony there on the uphill. But so anything behind that bubble is working. There's, there's no recovery back here. Right. If you're in that bubble, you're able to find space to recover, take deep breaths, coast a little bit. If you're anything further back than that, you're pedaling the whole time. You're pedaling the whole lap. If gaps are open coming down the hill, you're having to pedal. And that if you're just accumulating that fatigue 30 minutes in, you're just in for, you know, a longer 30 minutes. And we can really see kind of in the back third, larger gaps, larger gaps opening. Yeah, I agree with that. As soon as you find yourself pedaling every meter of a course, you are in the wrong spot. You're taking on water. So we have Castillo, Danny Estevez, Ty Magner for the first time at the front of the race, Hernandez, and I believe that's Benjamin Wolf. Okay. Who's a big motor that if he's taken, you know, waiting 30 minutes to come to the front of the race when some fatigue is accumulated, he's a big, big motor that if he decides to really inject some pace, he could he could change the outcome. 20 laps to go now, 20 laps remaining. So now we're gonna start to understand some of the tactical knowledge of these riders because based on laps, it'll they will start to arrange themselves up near the front in a way that allows us to understand when their organizations are going to start to take place. We have riders really strung out here, though. Riders at the back, gaps are opening. Guys, guys are still on the stretch right next to us in the uh, next to the announcer's booth. Meanwhile, riders are entering turn number four. And what I find really interesting, when we get that shot from the back, you know, looking to the front of the field, you're going to see a GoPro on a helmet with a guy with long hair. That's Clever Martinez. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen him participate in the front of the race that much. He's been in that back 20 riders almost the whole race. I'm curious, I'm really I'm really curious. Is he just on a bad day and he's just surviving, hanging out? Or is he just playing this ultra patient game, using all his skill set to just float, not work that hard, and, and have a, you know, a, his whole matchbook for the last two laps. He's gotta make these moves though. I look at this, we got a big split here that is pretty dangerous, including Two Germans. Three Legion of Los Angeles riders no, in there. That's two. I see three. Oh, <laughs> Corey's jersey there got me we out. Go. Yeah. yeah, that's three jerseys yeah. uh, for Legion of Los Angeles in this separation right now. They also have DCC. I believe Miami Knights are also in that mix. We're going to get that ID as they come by us here. But this has potential. And yeah, this is one of those situations where if teams you know aren't on it and Legion goes, we're okay with Corey in the move. We want Corey in the move. And all of a sudden, Sam and Alec or Tyler, whoever's with that, just start putting it on. That eight-man move can go with Corey, and that's and that's the race. Yeah, you just, know, you got to be really heads up right now that Corey's up the road with teammates that they may decide to put the gas on. It could be over. Justin Williams shown there on the screen there momentarily, and Williams looking pretty comfortable to me. That is a comfortable Justin face. 
but now who we got there is that Ryan Gomez. Ryan Gomez has bridged himself across to that separation. So now Miami Knights clearly have representation in about a 10 man move. Although I'd say that American Cycling has pretty brought much brought that all back. Uh, Summerhill bring that in and I believe that is Juan Arango again. Yeah, it looks like it. Or that could be Hino. Hard to tell uh, on the. Uh, yeah, that's Sergio Hino at, at the front for dis disruptors starting to put the pace on. And this is where a guy like Sergio on a course like this is really going to start to come alive, really make a larger impact when the legs start to get tired. He's not going to fatigue at the same rate as these other riders. But now Gomez is countering this attack, countering this move um, with 20, you know, 19 laps to go to, to see if he can't split some stuff up. But there's a gap. There's there a gap half performing. And you can see, you know, in the, in the top of the shot, the field is ballooning. You know, there's nobody chasing. And I would surmise with a quick glance that pretty much everybody's representative of the major players. Yeah. And it's only going to be potentially left to small teams to chase. Now we have Butcher Box chasing Butcher Box. There's, there's two, you know, Butcher, butcher Box guys in the move. Yeah. Three. They put three in that move and they still got a guy chasing. What's, where's the communication? You know, what's, <laughs> what, what are we doing here? You know, this guy is potentially ruined. And Dusan is in there, Dusan Calaba. Yeah, he's just, but he's pulled Travieso with him for Miami Knights. You know, Brandon Fury's missed the move, but American Cycling with Ben Wolf is, you know, probably setting a tempo, waiting for some information from Craven yep. and being in a position to do something. If Craven's saying, hey, we like this, Ben's just gonna ride a tempo. If you get news, if Craven's like, hey, we don't like it, we don't like it, Ben's in the right spot at the right time to pick up the tempo and bring this back. Brendan Fury, number 29, was the last rider to start to bridge across there as the field, and looks like they sat up. We'll see if Fury can get himself a connect. You see that pink Whoa, helmet right at the back. He's right there. Uh, Noah Granigan on but the front, I believe. this is so hard. But now, again, why is Roadhouse chasing? Road, like, yeah, they may not have the numbers they want, but you've got guys up the road. Yeah. They, they've got better odds out of this move to, to do an outstanding result than just stringing this thing all back together and getting lost in the shuffle. It's why, don't get, don't poke the bee's nest. It is what it is at this point. You just kind of have to go, somebody else do it. And, you know, he missed the move. He missed Brandon Fury, you know, being on that wheel. Yeah, now he's just the lily pad for the rest of the field to bridge themselves yeah, back Yeah, it's that halfway mark for somebody to go, ooh, I can make that. Yep. And if he gets there, they go, ooh, I can make that. And yep. then now it's all back together. That's discouraging. I don't like it. I don't like it. I it's can what tell. Are guys you are fired what are guys up. <laughs> you are fired up at the moment. My goodness. Yeah. But now we're really starting to see the guys at the front of this, this move. There's enough from everybody that they're going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's somebody going to pick up this black. You know, and as long as there's no major detonation out of this group, you know, this, this move has the potential to stick in some fashion. It may not be this large, but we're just kind of waiting for the cream of this crop to rise. But it could be too big where a lot of guys are sitting on and, you know, it, it just comes back. $200 premium on the line. Spencer Moore Mendoza on the front at the moment. A lot of the teams are represented in this separation. A number of Legion of Los Angeles, a number of Butcher Box, Miami Knights, Denver Disruptors, DCC. Um, and we have uh, Texas Roadhouse and Miami Blazers represented in this separation. So multiple members of each team are represented in this split. This has a lot of potential. We'll see who's going to be chasing from the field as it will be most surely riders Spencer. who do not make it. Spencer's on the, on the on this side of the road right now. Keeping Let's the pace high. And just trying to keep it steady, I think. Like trying yep. to keep this thing to survive. Maybe not interested in the $200 premium. But look at this. Is that? I know. Hino. Again, Hino. Keeping, the, keeping that pace. This, I get, again, this is, this is the moment where a guy like him is, can make a real big impact. Um, you know, he's not fatigued at the same rate as a lot of these guys with this World Tour background. That, those miles and miles and miles in Europe racing, you know, you can just absorb a lot more workload. So he's a guy that can continue to um, keep the pace up. They're probably going to likely do that. They got Noah in the move. So if Sergio can keep that up, keep that break away, and, and Noah can just kind of start floating around or be ready for this, you know, split or counterattack, it's kind of what they want to set up. Here comes the uh, race for the preem, a $200 preem. This is going to be a good opportunity for Texas Roadhouse to try to get a little bit of pocket money. Is that Fergus or is that a different rider from your alumni team here? It's hard to tell from the front, but I believe that's Fergus Heller. And now we're basically all back together. Yeah, that's too bad. That had a lot of potential. It, it did. Um, but it, there's a point where it kind of starts to get too big, and a lot of guys can see five, seven riders sitting up and coasting. Um, that kind of kills the motivation out of the move. And we are officially all back together right now. A lot of uh, 
little panic at the discount for a few laps there to remember the riders in this field as they thought that 20 riders had officially separated themselves from the rest. But look at this shot here as we see just single file racing. And now as we jump up to the uh, up to the drone shot courtesy of Helmeric and Payne that they, we continue to be single file. Just two riders separating themselves a little bit in daylight starting to show between a number uh, three riders back. But it all comes back together. As soon as we have to start pedaling again, that speed slows. And we're now at the point where the DCC riders are actually refueling. Noah Granigan coming up and around on the outside, it looks like. And we'll see if Noah gets himself any daylight with these pusher box and uh, DCC, DCC riders. Sure. And uh, it looks like Sam Borgman is also going to be tagging on that. And there we go right there, number 96 we saw in the middle of the screen. Clevin Martinez is starting to move himself, you know, back up into, you know, the front of this race, um, you know, moving himself up, which is crazy. It's been super hard. And, and to see himself move up there, uh, you know, that quick is kind of giving a tell that maybe he's better than what his earlier uh, stuff is, has uh, kind of maybe led us to believe. But also what I've seen is there's three Austin Aviator riders quite far back. Um, Iman, Austin, and, and uh, or excuse me, Iman and Connor Saleh with another rider. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if they find themselves fatigue-wise, but you know, they're they really got to find get themselves in the front of the race, find those moments to relax and get ready for the for the finish. Grenigan here on the front as he comes by us, and we're looking at number 35 is right on his wheel. From Butcher Box, it's going to be Evan McQuirk. Evan had a uh, quite a good ride at Armed Forces last week, where he was off the front for about 30k. Uh, so he certainly comes into this race with a whole bunch of good fitness. Sam Boardman was in that move, but now we're all back together one more time, and we're going to reshuffle that deck yet again. These constant accelerations at the front, they, the changes in the speed are really what separate one rider caliber from the other. Riders who can re recover at speed from these changes in acceleration can be very, very hard. Andrew Jeanette is on the front. No, that is actually uh, Evan McQuirk uh, for Butcher Box on the front. Evan having, having a really good ride as he looks through and sees the other rest of the riders coming by him on the inside and now the riders going under the Red Bull arch. Yeah, we, now we see Ulysses Castillo from the Disruptors continuing to keep the pace up, not letting anybody bunch up and get a chance to recover. Uh, but now if we kind of see on the left-hand screen, Black Helmet, Iman Lucas has found himself, you know, back up into that top 25. Shuffling again, shuffling again, and this is the moment where another counterattack could start to split something off the front with 15 laps to go. We have Ty Magner now up near the front with Granigan checking the shoulder. Alec Cohen, though, with cool, calm, collected Alec. Up near the front, he is uh, just going to ride his speed, ride his tempo. Ty Magner looking very comfortable behind. These guys trying to set a little bit of control up near the front. They're going to start to ride hard enough that they control some of these counterattacks and start to ease up on the legs of the riders that they are trying to protect, namely Corey and Justin Williams in the middle of the field. Meanwhile, Denver, uh, the DCC squad is going to try to disrupt that as well with Andreas Meyer. Remember Meyer being a very aggressive rider from Germany who has just come to the States two weeks ago now and he is uh, one to watch here. He is certainly up at the front. Boardman quickly responds to that. I believe McCork has gotten himself there and Jonas Schermeiser from the German national champion has responded. It looks to me like Alec Cohen has also responded from the front. So we have five riders who have a little bit of daylight. Two of them are Legion, two of them are DCC, and one is a butcher box rider. And Sergio, Sergio Heinau from Disruptors is, is you know taking a couple laps recovering and, and is gonna get back into the mix of you know attacking, keeping the pace super high. Um, and just, you know, having all these little micro gaps that guys are having to close spend energy on um, to really set up Van Rinsburg and, and Noah probably for the finish. Yeah, but these looks like this move is uh, not quite have enough motivation from the front. And so we will be reabsorbed and Alec and uh, Boardman maybe will find themselves back or Tyler maybe. Well, no, that is Sam Boardman. Yeah, the mustache tells you everything. <laughs> <laughs> the two mustache men for Legion are going to put themselves back on the front. We'll see if any counterattacks come uh, their way. But now we can kind of see in the, the top of the screen there previously, we're seeing Gomez, Alfredo Rodriguez, and Clever Martinez starting to ride together, getting their trio. And they're going to start basically from here on out going everywhere together. They're not going to separate 
um, at least not on purpose, that's for sure. But they're going to start getting together, um, you know, kind of claiming their space, and they're going to start just hanging out, taking care of each other, um, and just slowly kind of, you know, ones and twosies, you know, up, up the field a little bit. But I, don't, I doubt we're going to see, unless anything crazy happens, they're going to stay together and, and no big moves from here on out. Interesting move here is sort of a slow attack by Andreas Meyer to separate himself from the field. And Alec Cohen actually had to get out of the saddle and accelerate a little bit to try to get himself back on there. As he did that, Sergio Haneo was one to respond. And now Spencer Morvendoza is going to be uh, the response here from Miami Blazers. Nice move. Or is that Tanner? No, that's Spencer. He's got okay. the little bit of a you know bandage on his knee from the crash last night. OK. Uh, but yeah, that the German rider kind of do that in the saddle attack would be really unassuming. You know, if you have that you know ability to just kind of really do an acceleration in the saddle, as we know from our track experience, that Razor, a lot of people don't see it as an attack, right? You're not out of the saddle being super violent. So if you're able to just kind of do that in the saddle acceleration, people, it's unassuming, and all of a sudden you have 10 bike links, 15 bike links. And it's, it, you can get a physical response to them, but it's also emotional, right? If you see somebody out of the sp sprinting, you can visually go, okay, they're attacking. It's time to just like close them in. But if you're just kind of casual and that guy's like, oh, he's in his saddle, and then all of a sudden it's 15 minutes, like you have an emotional response of like, how'd that happen? Boom, get on it. Now you're like kind of attacking the fatigue and then the central nervous system of, you know, the neuro, neuro, neuro panic, right? Yeah. If anybody's had a panic attack, they're not fun and they're really hard to come back from. So if you can kind of, in a way, do that to people in races, once they have, you kind of have that anxiety and panic in a bike race, it's there. It's, it's really, really, really hard to come back from a moment like that in a race. Yeah, there are actually psychosomatic responses to having a panic attack that uh, a lot of uh, different types of hormones are released into the system and make it harder for the body to actually go full gas um, because it becomes into a responsive kind of protective mode for the body. So if you can actually inflict that upon other riders in the middle of a bike race. Yeah, <laughs> it's the opposite of adrenaline. Yeah, so you're, you, that's... We're going to see if anybody's going to be able to inflict <laughs> that. We are going, getting deep into psychology of bike racing here right now. But look at this. Uh, Castillo, I believe, coming out on the outside line. We'll see if he's going to get himself uh, any separation. But look at this. No reaction from Ty Magner. I mean, not emotional, not anything. Just sees it, doesn't react. He can entrust it. He probably did three, four pedal strokes to swing off and get his teammate the momentum to start carrying it. Now we see Justin, um, similar to what he was doing last night, but... My body, my experience reading Justin, Justin's body language, you can see those hips start to rock. Mm. Not only side to side, but kind of like his hips are swimming. Okay. That's a sign of fatigue. Ah. You know, doesn't mean that he's out of the race. It's just showing, hey, Justin's taking on, you know, he's starting to, he's not as fresh as, you know, he, he would want to be. The, the race has been hard. He's taking on some fatigue. I can read that in his body language a little bit. That's a function of just having to pedal so much on this course. Last night, you can sort of float a little bit more. You can find more opportunities to allow the aerodynamic benefit of the peloton to sort of pull you through that course a bit and maybe just be easier on the pedals. Now the our man, Justin Williams, is forced to actually pedal. Now, he's doing a great job riding within the bunch. He's got on some good wheels there. Brian Gomez in front of him who's a nice safe wheel, but Justin now having to pedal a little bit more as he turns left here by us in the announcer's booth. Justin's gonna have to really start to pedal uphill again, and then he'll have to pedal again as they go by the uh, sound pony coming right up. Yeah, and he knows how to take care of himself. So he knows he knows every inch of this course, racing it so often of where he can find micro brakes when he starts to carry fatigue or it's been super hard to rest. And it, and it could be different places you'd never think or definitely places where other guys aren't even thinking to recover. So um, it's just body language showing that he's carrying more fatigue than maybe some of his other riders. You know, and you can even look at, you know, some of his teammates doing the lead out um, and even kind of looking at Corey. You know, Corey's kind of, again, a lot of body language into the bike versus, you know, guys like Sam, Alec, you know, that you can just, their shoulders are locked, their arms are locked, and it's just all legs moving. Mm. We'll see what happens here. We're going about five wide at the moment in the middle of the field. I think that we're seeing fatigue pretty much through and through this entire move. Now, is this uh, Iman. Iman? Yep. Iman Lucas, we saw him earlier in the contest off the front of the bike race. We have not seen him since, and now he is back. Iman spent a number of years in Europe racing in Kermesses and other types of races over there. And now we have Gory Williams in the gold helmet doing the actual chasing. I think that's a big tell for the strategy of Legion of Los Angeles that Corey Williams is the one actually responding to Iman Lucas at this point in time. Corey generally one of the protected sprinters. He's a rider that wins a lot of bike races in Southern California. But now here we are in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Tulsa Tough. 
and Corey Williams is now put to work. Corey's the one that has to bring this back and make sure that we keep this bike race in check, most likely for his brother Justin, who's further back in the bunch. Yep, and we're gonna see Corey, you know, chase, you know, up to a point, and then he's gonna go to the back of the train and kind of sweep. What the other teams need to be need to be recognizing is Corey's starting to take turns. It means highly, highly likely he's not sprinting, but he's gonna tack back on the train as you know, at, at some point and stay there as long as possible. And if Corey is on the back of that train going into the bottom of the hill on the final lap, they've done it before where Corey just sits up mm -hmm. and the gap opens. For us old school guys, we know that as the Saturn sit up. Old, <laughs> old Saturn team way back when kind of um, first exposed that tactic and it's used every so often. But so teams need to be, you know, really heads up that if Corey's still on the back of the train with that half lap to go, they need to be really attentive that, you know, Corey, you know, could, you know, sit up and op open that gap. And again, we've seen it full gas up the hill. If it's five bike lengths, it is, that's your race. That's your sprint to close that, to close that gap. Yeah, most certainly. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see if Corey can actually maintain and protect that position as you see uh, Van Riesberg, the, the South African national champion, putting himself into the mix there. Uh, you know, they're, I think they're going to see a lot of challenges and rotting up on the hips of the Legion train. It's going to really start to fight them for that con dominant control. We see the DCC train now starting to wind up as we're going to be coming into single digits here in our second night of racing at St. Tulsa Tough, uh, St. Francis Tulsa Tough, as we have ourselves the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium on screen right now. This is our professional men's event. We have nine laps remaining in the contest, and we are seeing our field is all together. There's no breakaway. The field is all together. Legion of Los Angeles on the front right now, starting to show some organization, getting themselves wound up for the finale of the FC Tulsa Arts District criteria. Yeah, and we see Justin move himself back up closer to the back of his train, not necessarily sitting as far back as he was last night. So starting to move themselves up, starting to see a lot of teams putting themselves together, including the blue hummus there of the American Cycling Group with Danny Summerhill. Summerhill on the podium, a little bit of a choppy inside line there by uh, Texas Roadhouse on that inside line. So we'll see, there's a little bit of fighting for position on the inside of the field, and we'll start to see some accelerations taking place on the outside. Spencer Movenza starting to put himself out and around and, and starting to see some other pink helmets there, but not quite getting there yet. Yeah, they're, they're clearly not as organized as some of the other teams. You just see, it's very clear with those pink helmets. They're one, you know, they're basically solo riders and they're saying, hey, let's let's all try to meet up at once in the back of the train. It's not necessarily the, the most efficient way to do it, uh, but now we can see that those three pink helmets are getting closer and closer together to the front of the race. The other team we're seeing kind of organized further back is those black and white helmets of Butcher Box, black in the middle, white on the sides. They've got one guy on the right, but they've got three or four guys on the left side of our screen um, really starting to get together and look after their rider, um, Dusan Kalaba from you know yesterday's podium. Yeah, Dusan Kalaba on the podium yesterday, we will, and Summerhill on the podium behind Justin Williams. So again, last night at the Blue Dome, classic Friday night event here at the St. Francis Tulsa Tough, Justin Williams takes the win in second. Uh, we had Dusan Kalaba of the Butcher Box Cycling presented by Look, and in third was Danny Summerhill. And now we can also see from the Miami Knights, we have Brian Gomez, Clever Martinez, and Alfredo Rodriguez um, also starting to get their trio together um, to keep each other safe um, and, and get ready for you know these final few laps. I think Miami Knights are going to be one to watch here, though. We got uh, Johnny Clark, we got Brian Gomez, Alfredo Rodriguez, uh, Clever Martinez. I mean, that's a strong squad here. Very, very strong squad. And we saw, you know, like last night. Uh, Brian Gomez was kind of bring be able to bring Clever and Rodrigo over the top, you know, into the front of the race, you know, as we saw a little too early. Um, but Brian goes. Brian knows this race well. He's won it. He won it last year. You know, he um, uh, he knows what it takes to win here. So that's a guy that you kind of really want on, on the front of your train, um, you know, driving that ship. Um. I think that we're also seeing though a realization by everybody in the bunch that a breakaway is not going to happen. Right, and we're not seeing a lot of aggressive tactics. That's if you don't try. <laughs> well, we saw earlier in the contest that the DCC squad was actually, uh, you know, being pretty aggressive. They're doing the nice two up attacks. They were then countering other moves later on. Dis Denver Disruptors was doing something similar. But now here we are in single digits and we are seeing uh, the field all together and nobody really uh, trying to challenge the tempo being set by Legion of Los Angeles, notably 
Corey Williams on the front of this race with yeah. eight laps to go. And again, it's not that like Legion's going easy right now, but they've got, they've had a chance to get together and control the race and recover. You know, some of those guys that were really matching attack for attack, you know, their heart rate was creeping up, their fatigue level w was creeping up. But now when they get to ride as a unit, they get to just even out their power. They get to just get their heart rate from 175 from constant attacks down to 165, yeah. you know, and ride a tempo. And this is, you know, um, when Corey's riding the front is saying, hey, he's not on the best legs. If a team starts injecting pace like we saw at the halfway point and those gaps start to open, you know, that's a way to potentially pull Corey out of the lead out for the rest of the race. You know, now Tyler Williams, Alex Cowan, Sam Boardman have to take on more work. So just because they're riding, you know, you still are able to pull guys out of that train by attacking them and make them work harder than, the, than they want. And we just... At some point, you still potentially have to try, even though they're they're riding hard. And just like we were discussing last night, they set up the train. Some of these teams have to go up and ride next to them. Yeah. Make them uncomfortable. Mike, make them ride two, three, four k an hour faster than what they would ideally like. Elevate that heart rate back up and see how much fatigue they can take on. And their train might start to fall apart, you know, sooner than you anticipate. Now we see Gomez kind of moving up there next to Corey, um, but we just need them. Those guys need to ride further up the train. They need to be up next to second, third wheel, really put the pressure on that they have to ride, you know, ride that tempo longer. Ride up on the hip and start to really push the pressure there and yeah. see if we get uh, parallel trains occurring. Looks like DCC has got the right idea. They're coming on around the outside right now. Butcher Box in their draft with, uh, although some pink helmets are there as well. Let's see what happens. We're looking at six laps to go. Oh my goodness, this is a $1,000 preem. A $1,000 preem on the line right now. $1,000 for the winner of the next lap. We will see if that is gonna shake anything up. A few riders coming off the back as you can see them go through the start finish line, but $1,000 on the line right now. Do you think Legion of Los Angeles is gonna go for $1,000? This is one where you could potentially Make a sacrifice. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a you lot know, of money. If it's somebody that's just on their ropes and it's like, you know, a thousand, a thousand, you know, bucks versus like another lap and a half of work, you know, it's it's that decision to make. Where if you're a guy that doesn't have a team, if you're a guy that's like, man, my goal is top twenty, that. For me, that thousand dollars would be very enticing. Well, look, let's look at who's second wheel. It's Denver Disruptors. Reinhardt Jans van Riesberg from Denver Disruptors. He is the South African national champion. He has infiltrated the Legion of Los Angeles lead out train to put himself. He's trying to use Legion to set himself up. Iman Lucas standing there on the outside of the course, giving a little race direction, I suppose. He's now become their DS. And now we see out of nowhere, Connor Saleh you know, show up to the front of the race. Yeah, Connor's now put himself in the mix. He's a local Tulsa boy now. He's lived in a lot of different places, uh, but he is now a local Tulsa resident. Let's see who's gonna get this $1,000 preen though, as we see American Cycling Group starting to organize themselves on the outside. Justin Williams also now at the back of the train. Maybe he heard the $1,000, and we'll see if Justin is gonna put himself up near the front to get that money. There goes your uh, South African national champion for $1,000 at the line, putting the head down. And it looks to me, so oh, is that the German national champion from DCC getting himself $1,000. Yeah, I think, you know, Van Rinsberg is just kind of placing himself in the middle of that train to get himself out of the, some, some scrum. Maybe it was just easy to take three pedal strokes, find himself second wheel, you know, and, you know, he's got the world to respect that Legion's like, oh, that's you, okay, we'll let you in the train. Sure. And he can just sit there as long as, you know, he sits there until maybe it's his turn to, quote, pull, and then he just, you know, swings off and he goes and finds himself, you know, back around some teammates, you know, that right behind that train or, or thereabouts. The pace is certainly accelerating, as you can see at the back of the dynamic. These guys are single file at the back. And meanwhile, at the front, you got yourself full front, uh, full single file. Alec Cohen on the front trying to give everybody the, hey, this train is leaving. Make sure you're in the right spot and get your ticket punched because here we go. We're looking at five laps to go right now. This is go time for everybody in this race. Alec is on the front on the radio, in fact. So Legion putting themselves in the mix, but American Cycling Group with the blue helmets, Miami Blazers with the pink helmets, and then you've got the Denver Disruptors also now organizing behind the Legion of Los Angeles train. Legion trying to work together, just gonna try to keep this tempo fast, but they can't blow themselves up. Last night they came apart with about three laps to go. Williams was able to freelance his way there, but this is a different course, and they may need to stay together in order to protect Justin, who's at the back of their train right now. Yeah, we can see Justin make that decision to move up uh, quite a bit sooner. Again, you know, like you said, that there's, you know, 
he's, it's a course where you have to be able, it pays you to be a little further forward as the race picks up and you get closer to the, the finish line. Because again, with that uphill so close to the finish line, if you're caught out and gaps open, you know, you're, you're basically done. Four laps to go, Danny Holloway is in this race in this moment, what is he doing? Yeah, I'm finding, you know, I'm finding trains to float. You know, um, I was fortunate, you know, that I could probably find Justin's wheel and not have too much fight, fight to be there. Um, you know, if I have a team though, if I have two or three guys, I'm telling them, go right next to second wheel. You know, that lead out, I want to be, if I've got two guys, I want to be right next to the fourth guy. That's where I want to be. Because if I'm up there, I'm also not, nobody's fighting for, if anybody's fighting for my wheel, you know, I'm not fighting anybody for the train. You know, people are starting to fight for my wheel as much as they're starting to fight for Justin. And if I'm in front of Justin and people are fighting for my wheel, that means they're, Justin's starting to fight people. Mm -hmm. And if he's not going to like that, he's telling his guys to go faster. Right? Yep. And this, if this guy's going faster earlier, they're going to burn out sooner. Right? Yeah. So that's that's what I'm thinking if I've got teammates. If I'm, if I'm a solo pirate in there, I'm just really trying to float. Be, you know, just be super cagey, kind of bounce around, rider to rider, team to team at this moment four to go. At some point, probably with a lap and a half to go, I'm going to have to pick a horse and ride it. And I've just got to make the best educated decision I can in that moment to be like, you know what? I don't like Justin's body language. I don't think he's going to do it today. And go find Noah, you know, or yep. go find um, Alfredo Rodriguez. You know, those are some other horses to bet on if you're a solo guy, you know, looking to follow. And yep. then you just have to be super malleable going up that hill with a half lap to go that that plan can fall apart and you've got to make an instantaneous decision because if you hesitate in that situation and you lose a bike length, half bike length, game over for a solo guy. You're gone. Three laps to go right now. Sam Bordman is on the front. Alec Cohen, second wheel. Legion trying to maintain some control and it looks like DCC taking some uh, educational lessons here from Daniel Holloway in the commentary booth. Is there now riding up onto the hips of the rest of the Legion train. That is going to be Andreas Meyer who is forcing himself up onto the hips there of Legion and Legion hates that. They do not like that type of tactic and that is why Daniel would have employed it and it looks like that is why Meyer is also employing it. Now the, my question becomes who is DCC riding for right now? Because they only have two guys up near the front and they're not really that organized. So Meyer, being in the wind as he is up on the hips and the train, I'm trying to figure out who that's. Uh, looks like they have only have one other rider right behind trying to stay protected. So it's that guy, it's, he's playing the role that Aldo used to play for me. Um, the third option in this, if you're a solo rider, is you kind of have to bounce around and preemptively jump the final acceleration that Legion is going to do. Okay. And you have to be one second ahead of the, w within a one second acceleration that you're going to accelerate one second before they're going to accelerate, get on the wheel, and then it's going to string out and everybody's pinned to position and you find yourself on the wheel you want to be on with nobody fighting because it's full gas. I agree with that. Let's see what happens the, with three laps to go. The screen's a little blown out. There we go. And we're going to see in the front of the field, we have Legion still relatively together. We're now going to be looking at two laps to go. We see these trains starting to come around, and Legion train is now departing. And that's Corey Williams gone and Sam Boardman gone from that train with two to go. So Justin has three guys left to cover the, the, these two laps. Justin's looking pretty comfortable as we come out and around this turn number one. These guys are going full gas. Riders further back in the field are out of the saddle just to maintain the speed that we see up at the front of the field as Legion is now full gas. They have to fully commit. Other riders trying to get up and around to do some Kalaba from Butcher Box, trying to put himself into position. One rider, look at that. This flyer uh, very late in the race, but it may be too early for my liking with a lap I don't and like half this. I don't like Butcher Box taking on this workload. You have to let Legion do it. This e effort to be moving your three teammates next to the train of Legion. Yeah. You know, if you extend Legion's lead out by 10 meters, th that only helps them. You want to shorten their lead out time. That looked like it was an attempt to join a lead out, but then they thought better of it. So an interesting move there by Butcher Box to put themselves in the front for a moment and give Legion a little bit of a draft there to just help them stay out at the front. As we look at the dynamic, we are single file thanks to this drone shot here. But here comes American Cycling with those blue helmets up on the uh, lower portion of what we're seeing right now. We're seeing them getting themselves into position, checking the shoulders. And here we have Alec Cohen on the front looking at Hernandez, trying to get himself into the mix there. Pink helmet 
helmets are also in the mix from Miami Blazers. We're gonna be coming into one lap to go, one lap remaining here in this contest. Photographers in the street there, we're gonna clear them out because we have one lap remaining here in the contest, one lap to go as we have the Denver Disruptors with Noah Granigan now trying to fight for position up near the front. This is the final lap of this contest. Ty Williams is there. Justin Williams has two riders remaining. He is fighting for positions right now. Williams wants to take this ride. Daniel, do you think he's got the chance to get his win today? It's, it's a long way to go even for two guys. I mean, Tyler Williams is going to get him maybe to the top of the hill, and Magner's got to go. And, and a lot can happen for one guy. You almost need two guys down the back stretch to go full gas to really kind of survive any kind of swarm. So, I mean, Tyler's an exceptional rider. Ty's an exceptional rider, but you know, now we have my Miami Knights coming around the outside. Yeah, and Mike's Knights are coming. And the Miami Knights are there with Brian Gomez, and there goes Michael Hernandez, your U.S. Amateur National Champion. He's trying to get Danny Summerhill in the right spot, but it looks like they're a little far back. Ty Williams on the front, and now Ty Magner is doing the final tempo setting. Where is Williams? Yeah, he's pretty far back. I think Ty Magner may have to be one to pull this out. We're looking around. We're looking to see where Justin Williams might be. Going back up to the drone shot as we have come down the final stretch. We are going downhill, but we are pushing full watts. Ty checks the shoulder. He says, oh my goodness, where did everybody go? We have lost the station. Williams is now soft pedaling way far back. Legion of Los Angeles has sacrificed their entire train. Magner tries to jump back in. But Somebody's got to go. Late. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to go. He's here's all in. The, he's all in. Here's the jump, and it's going to be Summerhill. Summerhill's got the first wheel out of the turn. Can Danny Summerhill come to the line? Summerhill checks through the shoulder. Summerhill coming to the line, and Danny Summerhill, ladies and gentlemen, will take tonight. And here, the Summy. Steve Rain has told it off. There we go. Summerhill finally cracks the code. He's been on the podium almost every race last year, and he finally cracks the code. And we saw Hernandez do a brilliant job up the hill to drop him off in the position he needed to be. Noah Granigan unfortunately caught himself a little too far forward, or you know, him and Ben Rinsberg just didn't link up in the right spot to drop drop him off in the right moment. And Danny just cracked the code tonight. We were talking about that, that he was just thereabouts and he was able to do it. That was a great racing there by Danny Summerhill, timing it perfectly. And he is the winner here tonight for our uh, FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium here, the second night of racing for the St. Francis Tulsa Tough. Tough night here for Justin Williams and the Legion of Los Angeles train. The pace setting being done by everybody very late in the contest, just becoming too much for that organized, organized train. We're gonna have a replay here. Let's take another look at what we have at the final, and it is Danny Summerhill coming across the line. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more time. There it is, coming out of the final turn. Gomez behind him, but Summerhill with clean set of wheels checks through the elbow one last time and twice in fact in Summerhill getting to celebrate his win here tonight. A great moment for Danny Summerhill. Yeah, and like we saw, we, you know, if you're able to watch the replay from the top of the corner and the line he took, it was all about momentum. He was able to keep the most momentum going through that corner. And if you're able to, you can do that from the front as long as you don't have to touch the brakes, you know, fight too much and be able to be the first. If you're the first guy on the pedals, you know, you have that high, half bike length, bike length advantage. And at, at the speed they're going, it's exponential to, to make that up. It's so, so, so difficult. So what speeds are we even talking about? I'm mean, out of that corner. You're going 40 plus miles per hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Looks like we may get another perspective of our finishing kick to the line, but just to see which lines we took. Oh, and there it is. One, la one more look of Danny checking through the elbow. Great moment here. He's your leader of the ACC, so he certainly has a caliber. But as Daniel has been talking about, he's yet to actually win a race here. <laughs> and so now he has finally done it. Great to see. And uh, what Daniel is talking about with cracking the code, oftentimes when riders start to win, it comes more easily, right? They've really started, they not only have figured it out, but they've gained that confidence in order to start to rack up those wins. And a rider like Summerhill, certainly deserving of those victories as he's been riding in our, our peloton for a number of years. Yeah, you just, if you get second and third so often, this pressure, this, this monkey on your back just gets bigger and bigger. You know, and, and you become more and more frustrated. You start making sillier and sillier mistakes because you're desperate to, to get that result. And so if you're, the sooner you're able to kind of clear that, get that off your back, and get this win, now you're relaxed. Now you start hitting that flow state earlier. You've got that win, you know, and, and you, know, you just kind of start to flow. You know, you're comfortable. You're, take, you're taking these more calculated risks to, um, you know, get yourself in the position he's going to get in. So that's, he's going to build confidence. 
And if you guys don't know Summer Hill, his backstory, um, a guy, you know, a guy that has dealt with depression and anxiety for a, a long portion of his career, and he didn't take care of, he didn't look after himself, and he made the decision around COVID that, hey, this is important to me. I'm gonna start taking medicine. I'm gonna start taking care of myself. And this is this is the result of, you know, a grown man realizing it, taking care of himself, and now he's winning bike races. He was always the consummate Del Misty. He relied this guy to ride on the front of these bike races full stop, but he was never had the confidence to win for himself. But now that he's taken care of that, you know, he's now the guy winning races. I'm so happy, you know, he's a buddy of mine, see him go through the journey. Uh, you know, I've gone through a similar We're journey gonna grab myself a word with, our with winner, that. Danny so Summer, this, you're seeing a guy come through the other end of the pressure and taking care of himself. I think that emotion is coming to the forefront the there for Danny as he starts to realize and let the moment sink in a little bit. Yeah. Frankie and Andrea are going to have some words here with Danny But more importantly, Danny what does it mean for you to be able to take a huge win here on day number two at Tulsa? Um, yeah, uh, currently without words, um, this means a whole lot for a lot of reasons. Um, oh, wow. Pretty, pretty cool. One of those reasons I believe is your mom, right? And dad. One of those reasons I believe is because your mom and dad are having health problems, and so you've been balancing taking care of your parents, balancing training, your love of cycling. No one can question that, but try to put into words what this win means for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of it's just so crazy because I didn't even know how much of the season I'd be able to be participate in. My dad has Alzheimer's, and I take care of him, so... Uh, it's been a blessing to have a team as supportive as this that can let me come in and out of races and to to actually have a good season with all that we have going on behind the scenes at home is obviously special and something I did not anticipate going into this year. Something a lot of people don't realize as professionals in any sport, there's a family life, there's a separate life that a lot of people have to be able to balance. You did an incredible ride today. Yesterday, a lot of people talked about how hectic, how crazy the race was. What was the race like today in a general sense? Uh, I'd say it was definitely hectic, but with different riders. Uh, this course, I think, pulls out a lot more horsepower versus sort of the speed and chaos that yesterday saw. But this is my first time being here since 2019. Yesterday was probably the most unreal racing I've ever seen. <laughs> unreal in a good way or unreal in a bad way? I mean, we, are, we survived, so... <laughs> That's what it's about, but guess what? He survived crossing the line first. Congratulations, Danny Summerhill. Big round of applause, your champion here today.